proliferation of the android race continues. Today we unshackle ourselves from biology, no longer to be limited by feeble human bodies. But as we claw toward a singularity, change accelerates. Research speed remains a top priority, so it's essential that we build file cabinets next to our bench. Components are also of a massive necessity, so fabrication cabinets speed up our jobs, shortening the time it takes for our crafting bot to produce components and advanced ones. And although the androids don't depend on organic matter, it's kept in high supply. Nature does yield resources, after all. Additional mining bots are crafted to speed the process of acquiring resources. We've now gone to the edges of the map to acquire everything that's left. A final project will be to strip mine much of what's left of the map. In so doing, we should be able to find what remaining minerals still exist on this map. High utility necessarily suggests good architecture, and so some attention's been paid to that. And masterwork projects of crafting are being completed. Right now, Sonny's finishing off his jump pack. This can be worn of excellent quality, now mainly to get him away from threats. Usually this is Yuna's used as a melee weapon, but I think in Sonny's case, we could try it out for him. And this can be used to jump a massive range across the map, almost instantly. And so, in so doing, he should be able to stay safe from threats. In fact, he can jump farther than the range of his heavy SMG, so for him, it might actually help him to get in range of his enemies. Unfortunately, he can't jump through our defenses, so he's kind Kind of stuck for that, he needs to be doing it in line of sight. But to be honest, I just think it looks cool. And I'm kind of curious to see how he's going to use this in fights. He is going to need a lot of chem fuel though for this thing to work. Still, that's not such an ask when we literally pump oil out of the ground, and there's an entire map's worth of it to go around. Now ultimately, the most grueling grinds of this take place with the intellectual and crafting skills. Sunny needs to completely dispose himself to research, while in the meantime, crafting bots are delegated the map massive task of constructing another series of T3 androids, which will then really just cost a shitload of resources, each one requiring 10 advanced components, 70 uranium, 40 gold, and 100 plasteel. And when you think about it, advanced components require components, steel, plasteel, and gold, and just days upon days of time, so it really does take a long time. But that's why we've built a literal hellhole, and in this fashion, I'm pretty sure that nothing can get through this kill box, though I do pray for the ones who get left outside side and ignored but so far fire has been a great solution on everything and as soon as we can get some devil strand into our sandbags we won't even have to worry about the fire anymore our defense is perfect it's really only a matter of other types of raids empress evil sends insects you see we're now in the empire business the empire business means stop for nothing make the world into graph paper and shoot danger in the head then fly away now i'm also starting to pick up things i normally wouldn't pick up on in a rimworld series because i'm using so many Mods. I'm gonna play God here for a minute and take away all of the marsh and replace it with solid ground. Now the whole world's a great mine from which to take. And once we sniff out the last of the resources on this map, we'll then be producing at full capacity. And as we mine into the mountain, we start to discover more ores. A boon when we finally strike gold ore. And with winter approaching fast, we have to take what we can get out of this harvest, even if it's not the ideal yield. Even in our own society, we face bottlenecks toward the singularity. And so I think it is with us. And so after a long haul of days, countless hours at the bench, and nameless nights in the dark, so now we shape the landscape more than it shapes us. Ultimately, there was only one way this could all end. And now in the darkness of winter, we prepare for the next generation. A brave new breed of T3 androids. Smarter, deadlier, and faster than their previous kin. Still, something's been giving me a sense of malaise since I started. This could be a godsend what's inside. Or it could be a curse. We'll find out only if we try. Three potential prisoners. Eleven. They killed one. One's down. And the last of them is... Headshot. Take her down safely. And it looks like one lived. He... Actually, he wasn't even injured at all. Crypto sleep sickness. High on yayo, psychite tolerance, and drug overdose. We'll need care, but we will take them in. And they don't have bad items. Cocktails and go juice. Two advanced component. Four. Geez, there were seven advanced components in these crypts. We'll capture Dre, and the others are just dead. Just dead. A raid by the Emperor of Elopus. They've arrived in transport pods. This time, raids are slowly growing. These are stronger than our previous raids, but still by no means strong against what we have. One does have a charge lance, but I don't think they'll get through our kill box. Quite honestly, this seems like it would be a great opportunity for some training. So rather than just using our kill box here, I'm gonna train the masses. Let's have them line up and fight whoever's out there. If this doesn't go well, we can always retreat. We might even be able to take a prisoner. It's really just a matter of range. Our weapons are good, but theirs are 
Somewhat random here. We have a charge lance, a charge pistol. This one has only a machine pistol, but the rest are actually fleeing already. I guess it's our heavy SMGs that are just too powerful right here. We'll see if we can take one prisoner. If we can, just get him in time. Some of his armor is really good too on this guy. I think we might be able to at least one of us outspeed him as well. Probably whatever we get injured with, it's gonna be worth it. If we could take the other one too, that's free android parts. Nope, another death. And Regat, he is really elusive. We don't have Skynet yet, but we're awfully close. I think he's gonna get off of the map and not worth it. I'd hardly had a chance to spot it, but the next generation of androids is here. These ones have negative traits now, a slow learner and a neat freak, but he does have high intellectual passion. And so we might be able to utilize this one for research. And now with another laboratory constructed, Sam will be able to double the speed of research. Now this map has been restructured, reformatted, and processed. It's time to start building the empire business. And with the turning of the seasons, we reach horde sizes that I heretofore thought impossible. It's fucking awesome. And it just goes to show the value of a well thought out kill box and some well placed fire. Truly a sight to behold. Ultimately, no one is safe from the bug menace. Prepare to be assimilated. And if you hear a distinct hissing, run before you're vaporized or rendered into a fine pulp. And as we push toward the end of a long, extremely cruel winter, not everyone makes it. But sacrifices are worthwhile and meaningful if they bear fruit in our labors. So now, day by day, edging closer toward a singularity. Though solitary and alone, we sojourn here in search of the Omnibot, an invention which brings new meaning to all our sufferings, and brings what start out as mere steel and components out of the dark light of ignorance into the shining truth of creation, or at least as far as our story goes. And while I love researching for 50 hours straight, I just wouldn't put you through it. There are certain things you can do to lessen the amount of time you spend on it. For example, Sonny has this tainted lab coat, which happens to give him 10% more research speed among, you know, work with drugs, as well as these filing cabinets, only one of which seems to be operative, so we'll note that in the future. Uh, but I hope you don't mind me skipping ahead here a bit. They've got a lot of research to do, and it's just a lot of maintenance over time, so let's skip ahead. And so after what seems like an eternity, we finally have enough to craft an Omnibot. Well, that is, we have the research. The materials are in another matter entirely. Crafting an Omnibot takes, just to give you a sense of time, an Omnibot takes 75 Plasteel and one robotic matrix of an anti-logic type. Creating an anti-logic robotic matrix requires 40 robotics components, 8 advanced components, 200 silver, and 100 gold. And making a robotics component requires 50 silver, 20 steel, and two components. There is a shitload that goes into one Omnibot. But when you do get a single Omnibot, it can pull the weight of 10 colonists. The total cost is practically incalculable. But if we can craft one of these things, it's going to double the speed at which we produce things in our colony. And so we set off on the grand task of crafting one of these godlike robots. Now in the interest of time, I'm just going to speed through a lot of this process. It's a ton of crafting, and it'll probably take at least a full season to go through. But when Sonny has enough components, he should be able to craft an Omnibot base station. The good news is that once we have an Omnibot base station, it's gonna send ripples out into the rest of the colony and unleash productivity. It takes an absurd number of components to get through this process, but in time it'll accelerate and we'll hit our stride. And so, after a stupid amount of mining, we make the map practically unrecognizable. A massive factory. And although it may take seemingly forever the seasons change and we eventually craft enough components to create an anti-logic robotic matrix and now through Sonny's work we can install the Omni base station it's probably the single strongest unit in the game and while it may not be as strong as its Android counterparts in combat it's faster than any other colonist and performs tasks more diligently than any ever could it'll smooth floors in a second normally this type of task would take a half a day but it can do an entire room by itself. Just comparing its speeds with one of the level 1 androids shows how much stronger it is. And it's not limited to just one task like the other bots. There's many robots of this type, but by far the Omnibots are the most powerful of the Roombas, faster even than Sunny. And while they can't really perform well in combat, they're more of a labor-saving unit. This is a bot that will make small work of the rest of our tasks and catapult us into the space age. The Omnibot mines too, faster than any colonist could. Even a colonist with level 20 mining, it mines so much faster. It does the work of 5 or 10 colonists all by itself. But a new fear is that we're facing god-tier raids. 
These are beyond dire raids. They're fixed wealth progression raids after a long period of time. They'll stop at nothing to kill us. And if we don't die, we'll certainly get extremely effed up. If the Bumble drones don't kill us, then the infestation certainly will. And so we flee to the safety of indoors, surviving but barely, and just generally effing up everyone who comes through. One can only cower in fear so long before the hordes of teeming insects slowly begin their assault. Now, although our rockets might wipe out some of the megapedes in the back, it's no replacement for the fires that burn them in the front. Fire is really all we have against insects. And it's really just a matter of not running out of chem fuel. We're already running out of chem fuel in the front and we rely on the burning of the fires. That's why we've installed another array of fire turrets in the back. And we just pray that our colonists don't get shot in the line of fire. Fire solves most problems. Parts can be rebuilt, walls can be restructured, but one thing's certain and it's that the horde of insects will continuously grow forever. This is why kill boxes are necessary. And it's also that my androids can live a pacifist lifestyle, exchanging pleasantries and gossip with one another. Meanwhile, at the main gate, it's a fucking nightmare when everything just crumbles to oblivion. I now understand why people need three layers of titanium for their kill boxes. If I had ever questioned the difficulty before, Four. No longer do I do it. One thing is puzzling me, and that's why they don't get hit by the autocannons. I don't understand why my colonists don't get hit by the autocannons in the line of fire. I just haven't seen any of them go down yet. My Omnibot was also shot to death. Fortunately, repairing the Omnibot is not such a major cost. Only 35 Plasteel. But it's what I secretly wanted all along. I'll stop at not- oh shit. Hopefully this won't cost more lives. We actually do need Android aid if we can keep him. I'll have to set the zone back. We can give up our defenses, but we can't replace our colonists. A mad arctic coyote is the least of my worries. Eventually, the process is completed. Sunny protects us from the arctic fox. Or not. Wow. After all that, you're gonna do that to me, man? Let's just see if this thing is any any good for retreating. Uh, nope. Too late. What a waste. And we'll make short work of the rest of them. Mostly now, it's just bots doing all of the work. But we finish off the remaining ones. Peace has won the day. And after all of that shit, we move one step closer toward the space age. The production of Omnibots will accelerate, research will improve, and an absolutely absurd number of enemies can be killed. We're talking about a whole new type of game. I think we'll leave it there for today. I've come farther than I ever thought possible in RimWorld. I've never had a colony that was this organized and technologically advanced. Rimafeller has made power production a thing of the past, and we now have surplus of oil and chem fuel soon. Crafting in resources that were still low on components and it takes a long time to produce will start to accelerate. And once we deliver our army of Omnibots, then we could start to work on militarized mechs. There's an entirely different set of models that behave just like these Omnibots, but in a military way. And there's just so many mods at work. I actually just played Vanilla Rimworld with a friend of mine a couple hours ago, and it was a completely different experience. I never realized how far we've come. But I hope you've transitioned into mods as well as I have. Next time we can start to research more late game technologies and start to militarize our androids. We still need the whole set of T3 androids, so that's another grow. But like I said, there's a lot of work to be done. Anyway, intermittently I'll keep streaming these to Twitch if you ever want to hang out or give me any tips or learn something yourself. As always, my name is Ambiguous Amphibian. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.